if I don't call that in, which I won't know. Our purpose, as we said before, is to provide a dog park in a mobile environment. Our other purpose was to help Kendall with his teaching classes 406, 452, teach power transfer and the different hydraulic circuits. And, uh, I mean, it runs off 12 volt battery. So most of y'all have seen it run. But I'm about to show the rest of it here. Uh, this is a schematic right here. You can see our electric motor running our pump. And we have a two position four way that's controlled by a solenoid and two pilot operated check valves that lets us run the motor one way. But when you mash the button one way, the pressure opens the pilot to let the loop do a full circle. And in turn, when you mash the button to go the other way, the same process occurs with the pressure from the other line opening the pilot on the other port to let the loop circle. All right, so when we did our testing for our, uh, so we get our flow rate and stuff, this is what we use. It's a load test analyzer. Uh, most of y'all probably seen it hydraulics. But what you do is uh, you put your line, lines in there, thing, and it's got a, a resistance a little dial right there. And what you do is when you turn it, it puts a, uh, more load on the motor, and then it'll tell you your uh, <coughs> flow rate for that PSI. Four hours we did from zero all the way to 1800 our pressure relief and we went 200 uh, anchors. And this right here is the chart that we got. I you see, you know, when, you, when you have zero PSI, then you, you, uh, when you have zero load, you're having your, uh, your greatest pressure flow. And then as you increase that, your PSI, your loop or your, uh, your flows decrease. We also, I didn't show you, but we also used to, uh, we test our current too. And basically, as you're drawing more PSI, or as your PSI increases, you're drawing more current, and that's, that's what that's for. This, this is how we set up the test for our force after we got our flow rate, pressure, and current. Basically, we had a scale attached to right in this truck, and we hooked it to the scale, start pulling up the heel, and when I read, read a certain weight, we take that weight and then see what the PSI was to get our, uh, our formula for our pressure force. Right here, right here. This is our force versus pressure chart. See, it's linear. We got this by like Bo was saying, hooking our scale to it and then checking the pressure at that certain amount of force. As you see, plenty of bullet force pressure is increasing from 600 pounds of force to about, about 700 psi. The more you can graph that through all these points. And that's just, that's just another view of kind of like from the front of the stroke. Traction versus your flow rate. You can see here, flow rate increases, your traction speed's gonna drop. Flow rate increases. Flow rate increases, your traction rate slowing down because you put more force onto your winch. You can see that on this graph here. See how the flow rate, as it increases, your traction rate drops. And this is our log splitter, and that's how we tested it. And we have there's a pressure gauge right here that reads the pressure whenever you're mashing down on the log, what how what pressure you're getting at the line to split the log. And we calculated our force on the log splitter by power squared times the pressure that we were running at, and we got 12,723.45 pounds of force. And that was with a three-inch cylinder at 1,800 PSI. 
And the results, after testing, we calculated that we needed to double our displacement because our retraction rate was twice, what, actually it was almost three times what we initially wanted it to be. So you had to give up speed to increase your pulling force and vice versa. So what we would do was we had a DS160 pump, or the hydraulic motor, and those motors, you can change the internals. The body is the same, but you change the internals to increase the displacement. So all we had to do is change the internals on the hydraulic motor that we have, and that would let us pull the 3,000 pound load. But for what we wanted to do, it turned out sufficient. All right. We calculated it only had 1,500 pounds of pulling force, but as I said, that we can change the back of this hydraulic motor and in decrease our increase our displacement because we needed twice the displacement than what we have on this certain model. Brand fuel mesh brakes will. And to change the attachments, all you gotta do is release the quick connects. And then you plug up your next implement. And this Did y'all build that log, log splitter too? Y'all built the long split too. That was one for no, the shop. Was, that was the one that was built for that zero turn. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey Jack, y'all do oak? Huh? Yeah, we did some oak every day. We did oak. Oh, yeah. How much y'all charging? That ended up being a lot quicker than y'all thought it was going to be, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it was only like a foot of retraction, but I mean, look how long it took to split all that. Yeah. And once it got hooked up. Get some semi What, in terms of, uh, you know, the agricultural application of this, y'all had mentioned, you know, what, 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 what do you want to demonstrate this on? Excuse me. Y'all know how aggravating it is back tracking it up to a plow, put the hydraulics up, lift the plow up, get it where you can drop it down the road, and then you gotta hook the truck up to it. This way you can put the hydraulics to it, drag the truck up and take off. Kind of takes out a step of that. And what it we calculated all the costs it was for us to build it, not the production cost, but the build cost of what we used and what is what all we put on here it was seventeen hundred dollars and that was that was actually actually a hundred dollars less than what we calculated to begin with so we actually ended up saving money after we bought everything we saved a hundred dollars on our original budget 